Welcome back, Dan Williams Survive Outdoors. Today, we're going to discuss eucalyptus and picaridin for repelling mosquitoes. I've gotten a lot of feedback in terms of why I haven't mentioned eucalyptus. Today, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about it in detail. Is it dangerous? Is it safe? So, here we go. <laughs> Before we start, I want to talk about the different types of medicine. I am an allopathic PA. Uh, physicians, PAs, nurse practitioners, we practice allopathic medicine. That is where we diagnose and write prescriptions. I also look at, believe it or not, the holistic approach. What is their past history? Is there anything else besides pharmaceuticals that can you know, help this person? Then there's osteopathic medicine and they get the same training as physicians, but they uh, can also have training with musculoskeletal and they can do alignments. Then you have chiropractors who specialize just in musculoskeletal, and then there's naturopaths, and we're gonna leave those over here for right now. 15 years ago, I was in Arizona uh, working with a physician and I was invited in to do a Native American sweat and I backed up and jammed a pitchfork into my heel and I had a very nice wound. The elder comes over and says, hey, I want you to try this plant over here. It's called the greasewood plant. Take the leaves, mulch it up, make a paste, put a little water in it and put it on that wound. And me being in my thirties, I knew everything. And I rolled my eyes and went to the hotel and I did try it. The next morning I woke up, it was 80% resolved. So then I started delving in and looking at herbs and other types of interventions that clearly work. So it's important that we look at all interventions. So with that, we're going to jump right into eucalyptus. Natural comes from a tree, but is it safe? Let's talk about ingesting it and breathing it, which people do. It's supposed to help the lungs and clear up the lungs, suppress cough, People put it in a breathing treatment, and there is a toxic effect. Uh, the toxin is syn sineal, and that toxin goes through the liver and actually competes with the enzymes in the liver. So if you're taking another medicine, let's say erythromycin, that eucalyptus is gonna compete. Your erythromycin is not gonna be broken down like it should, and those are going to the levels are going to elevate and that's going to it happens with about 10 or 12 different medications if you're taking eucalyptus yes i understand we're not spraying it on our skin but it's important to understand the toxic effects of this before i jump into that as a mosquito repellent uh, a 73 year old woman out in arizona died by taking five tablespoons of eucalyptus into her, her little humidifier breathe it in got a pneumonitis, which is an inflammation of the lungs, and died. More children are accidentally ingesting eucalyptus, and they are being brought to the ER. And those stats are actually pretty impressive, especially in Australia, where they evidently they use a lot of eucalyptus. So, uh, and also I wanted to mention, this is important. Let me just explain how toxic this can be. The actual treatment dose if it's going to be used in a breathing treatment or neb treatment is something like 0 0.5 mls which is one tenth of a teaspoon one tenth of a teaspoon so that tells you hey this is pretty potent this eucalyptus so put that in perspective now eucalyptus works against mosquitoes i'm on the record all you natural guys out there it does work Absolutely. But it does not work as long as picaridin and DEET. And you have to reapply it, you know, in about three hours. So here's the thing that a lot of, I see this with a lot of patients. Oh, it's natural, like Echinacea, vitamin C. I can take as much as I want. It's natural. Too much vitamin C is going to give you kidney stones. Uh, too much uh, eucalyptus, too much eucalyptus is going to cause skin dermatitis. If you get in your eyes, you're going to have a conjunctivitis, some pretty intense inflammation of your conjunctivitis of your eyes. But the same can be said for picaridin. I just want everyone to know that, yes, it does work. 
It's about third on the, my list of being used in the outdoors. It can irritate the skin and it does irritate the eyes and can be mildly toxic. So I'll be really careful with it. It's not just some natural product that we can use freely. So where am I at at the end? The conclusion here is picaridin. I definitely would use that as number one. I would use eucalyptus and I have used DEET. Obviously many of us have. If I'm going into a very infested area or if I'm down in Florida where they have dengue, West Nile, Zika, I am not using eucalyptus. I'm going to go with picaridin. Uh, if I'm overseas and I'm in Honduras or I'm somewhere in South America, I'm not using eucalyptus. I will use eucalyptus with my grandkids, my wife and I, in the backyard, not a problem. You have to weigh pro versus con, risk versus benefit on any medication, natural or pharmaceutical. Always weigh benefit versus risk. That's it. I hope that answers a lot of questions about eucalyptus versus picaridin. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. I'll be glad to get back to you. Till next time, keep your eyes on the horizon, face to the wind. See you guys.